You're so pretty. You're adorable. But you're so dumb. You're so dumb. Stupid. No, I understand that too. <laughs> you didn't take this away from me. Yeah. You can you can you can only be one or the other. You're not allowed to be pretty and smart, you know. <laughs> God just doesn't make people that way. You get one or the other. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Well that's a kind of belief though. If you see someone who gets everything, mm -hmm. I get jealous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's well, not no fair. one takes you seriously if you're pretty, you know? Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, nobody takes you seriously if you're born, you know, female, but I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, um. It's a tough part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, running good. Running good, running good, running good. Wow. Better than last week. Yeah. We had, a, we had a, all the trouble this, this week. Hopefully, because the last <laughs> time it started out. Um, Strong and then got weaker, mm. but uh, let's we'll see how it goes. I played around with my computer. I took my computer to the on campus IT. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I got my fan fixed. Notice it's not making. And then no ice else. pack. Yeah, no ice pack today. Yeah, that's great. My my computer is functioning the way that it's supposed to be functioning. So what did the IT guys do? Did it, they tell you? Um, they fixed my fan. That's it? It, it? Yeah, it was something wrong with a fan. And then, like, uh, static electricity is something that can really mess up a computer. Oh, I so, bet. Yeah, so because it was clicking and rubbing, it was it was throwing. Not, that wasn't throwing oh. sparks, but it was, like, causing, you know, static. Yeah. So it was messing with some of my stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, at least that's what they think. And then yeah. I also um, I had my computer re-imaged. Which is where they take everything off of it and then you put it back on. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I thought that that's the only PC thing. In no, a PC, no. you do the, what, what they call it, not refreshing, uh, there's something, something called, like that. You just, uh, you re refresh everything. Yeah. And you only put uh, back on, you know, what you need. Mm hmm So, that was indeed what we did. Nope, back to yellow stream health again. So weird. The cyber world is still so no, back to yellow All right, Kuniko, you were just about ready? Yeah. I'm going to drop this on the Facebook. And let's... Uh,
Alright. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Kuniko, you ready? Yeah. She's over there folding origami as usual. It's I Kuniko's it's Kuniko's natural state is Oh, where's Kuniko? He's probably folding something somewhere. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to Origami Lunch in Origami. Uh, I'm Stephanie, this is Kuniko. Okay. All right, so for those of you who joined us last week, um, so our format is we do an origami book review in the beginning, yes. and then we move on to origami later on. So we have a mm -hmm. couple of things here. Mm -hmm. or Kuniko continues to, to, to Some fold kind of, away. Uh, more origami information. It's not how to, but uh, I'm going to show you what's available. Yes. And Steph's book review is so refreshing. Um, <laughs> if you are someone who is an origami fan, and, you know, you assume the origami books this way, that way. But uh, uh, Stephanie is new to origami and she's an artist, so she has a perspective of the artist's eye. Okay, here you go. Take it there. Take, take it away. Take it away. All right. So the book we're going to be doing today is The Art and Wonder of Origami. So here's the book. And uh, Kuniko is about to laugh at me as I butcher this person's name. Is it uh, uh, Kuniko? Yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's very similar. Very close. Yeah, but you say, uh, you have to say uh, four syllables. Kunihiko. Kunihiko. Kunihiko Kasahara. All right. That wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, you did pretty good. All right, so this is a this is a um, beginner's book. This is definitely um, a really good starting book. It's a paperback. It's color all the way through, just like the other our other books. Um, there's a small bit of information before each origami uh, creasing pattern. All the way through. Don't be don't be intimidated by the uh, the uh, the amount of, of folds you see here because it really is a beginner's book, and then it also comes with a cheater CD here in the front. Uh, so this book is a little bit older. I want to start off by saying that um, I don't know. Is there a newer version of this book? A newer publication of of this? I you, think anywhere? actually, honey, this is a newer version. Actually, because CD-ROM comes with it. Right. And whenever you see the CD-ROMs and DVDs, oh, well, CD-ROM, yeah. CD-ROM is old. Yeah, yeah. Okay. well, it, gotcha. yeah. It, it's, this, even though it's old, it's, it was, I, I actually really, really enjoyed this one. I, I looked at two different books today, and this was the favorite out of the two that I looked at. Um, so this, the CD that it comes with is compatible with uh, Windows uh, XP and Windows 98. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, so it's not just a little bit old; it's, it's right. significantly old. Right. Um, so I don't know if you'd be able to get that to work. Cause I know some things on um, Windows XP don't they don't run on the new Windows 10. Uh, so I'm not sure if the CD works. It did not work on my Mac. I have a MacBook Pro 2012. Um, then couldn't get it to work. So that, just a heads up on that one. But you really don't need the CD to work this book. So the thing about this book is the other two books that we reviewed were absolute um, pattern books. So you'd start with step one and move through all the steps. And um, at the end of it, you'd have a piece of origami. And it would be you know, a full piece. So the thing about this one is these are described as origami puzzles. So what he does is after giving some instructions. So like I said, this is a great beginner's book, so it gives you some instructions. You can also see that there's some instructions on how to use that CD-ROM. Uh, but he starts off with a really simple pattern, and then what he does is he builds upon it. So for example, I'm going to show you the one that, that I walked through. So you start off, he offers two options here. So basically it's a... Um, uh, I'm going to butcher it again. Uh, Yako. Uh, yako san ne. Okay. Mm. And, and the pinwheel. Mm -hmm. And then he goes through and he gives instructions. So the, the instructions are a little bit hard to follow because they're a little uh, uh, strange. But I think that adds to the charm of the book. So mm -hmm. a con around, along the bottom of the book, all the way across to the second page, is the instructions for the pinwheel. Or the instructions for the... Um, say it again, Kuniko. Mm -hmm. The oh, yakko. Yakko. Yakko, okay. Yakko is, uh, did you know what yakko is? No. You like it. It's a, it's a uh, kind of 
funky way to say samurai. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. See, I was looking at it, I was like, oh, it's, it's a kimono. Mm -hmm. right. And then up at the top here, you have the pinwheel, and you can see the instructions for the pinwheel. So once you've mastered the pinwheel, I'm going to show you the pinwheel here. So here's the pinwheel. And then if you unfold it, here's all of the shapes that you make when you make the pinwheel. So once you've made that pinwheel, what he does is he builds upon it. And he doesn't give you instructions on how to make these, but he gives you all of these other designs that are based off of the pinwheel. And some of them have a little bit of instruction that go along with them. And then if you go in the back of the book, there are some other folding instructions. And then here's the one for the yako. So there are some folding instructions. And then there's more folding instructions in the back. So what you're trying to achieve here is you're playing with the paper. So once you have this pattern here, which, which roughly folds, uh, see if I can get it back so it's, uh, I should try to do it so you guys can see. So uh, once you kind of get the idea of how this folds, let me this this way, and fold out. like this, you can make all kinds of stuff. You can make all different kinds of patterns. So this is the, and then all you do is it goes backwards, like that. So from there, we're using these folds on these lines, plus two, you can make this boat. So if I unfold this boat, you can see that it's just the pinwheel. See? But it folds into the boat. But he doesn't give you exact instructions on how to take it from here to here. You have to figure it out on your own. Um, like I said, there are some cheater instructions, but even with this one, with the origami instructions for the, for the pinwheel, there's kind of a missing step. So when you're folding it, he shows you it looks like this. And you get to this step, and then he stops. And he just goes from, okay, so it should look like this with the double door. And then he goes, okay, and then now it should look like this. But he doesn't quite tell you how to do it. So part of the fun of this book is, is figuring out how to get from step one to step two. And they're all very simple designs. You're not making anything really, really complicated in this book. Um, so they're, they're, they're easy to figure out. And a lot of these are, they, he offers variations. So for example, here's a couple different vases. And they all start with the same base, which he teaches you how to fold earlier on. But you get all these different varieties and you can, it, 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 I think it really breeds creativity. I think it really, it really made you think about it. Even though I only did a really simple design, it did take me a couple of times to figure out that, oh, I have to fold it in half and get one more crease in order to get it to go from pinwheel to boat. So it was a lot of fun trying to figure out these, these things. I haven't tried anything harder. You can make, like, that horse comes from that pinwheel. Um, and I didn't get that far. But I, th I think this is a fantastic book for, for mm -hmm. someone who's looking to be more creative with their origami, somebody who's looking to maybe make their own patterns. Mm -hmm. They're not interested in, in following the instructions constantly. They're, mm -hmm. they're more interested in being creative and, and using it as an art medium. There's even a really cool section as you go to the back that he calls, uh, what was, I think he called it origami painting. Yeah, painting with the origami. So what this is, this painting with the origami, is it shows you how to take this flat base pattern, uh, this way, sorry, everything in all my screen is backwards, uh, this flat base pattern, and use it to fold these more interesting delicate. So as you can see, there's a, there's a small bird over on the other page, and then up here there's the crane, but it's all based off of that fold. So if you go to his step, one here, you can see that it's that pinwheel again over here. That it's that pinwheel again. 
that he learned to fold the page before. So yeah, I think it's I think it's a great book for someone who's, who's looking to be a little bit more creative and take their art to a, a, to making their own patterns and figuring out how to um, be more spatially aware and transform a shape to eventually be able to look at something and go, I think I know how I could fold that. Mm -hmm. I, I could take mm -hmm. a flat piece of paper mm -hmm. and fold it into something else. And then else. that variation makes you kind of inspired to, if you can do this, I can do that. Yeah. And and then I I think that was a purpose of that. I think it's called a Frobel Frobel base. I could be wrong though. Um, the it's a, one of the particular base and it. It's a variation from the pinwheel. Some people call it pinwheel base. Um, from here, you can go many different ways, just like you were saying, and many, I mean many. The reason why you can do so many variation is this four square. You do the open squash of the four of them on here. And when you do the open squash on this, you basically has four preliminary base pattern and that lets you to make it into a crane, make it into the bird on each square. So that is going to give you an enormous possibility. Mm -hmm. And um, this author, Kasahara, he's published so many hundreds of origami books. So he understands the uh, uh, principle of the so many folds. So he's coming from that direction and he really want to give you a concise idea of right. uh, origami cre creativity. So that, I think that is a great fun part. Yeah. I just want to show you guys. So mm -hmm. talking about creasing patterns. So this is, yeah, so this is the, these are the lines that you get. I, I chose this paper so you guys could really see the lines. Mm -hmm. um, so all it is, here is now the lines for the, the, the simple, the, the, um, the pinwheel. So the only difference between... I is it a difference? No, the the same. only difference is that this one, the one that was... Um, oh, the, there's a... The, yeah. It folds down the middle uh -huh. here uh -huh. yeah. and folds down the, down the down, center yeah. here. How did you... Oh, uh, yeah, you started out with... Uh, uh, Yakusan base, yaku base. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah, so it. I fold yeah. it in the yeah. corners. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, so, so for the for the thing. for everybody else. Yeah. yeah. So this one starts out when you don't have any lines. Um, you start out by folding it in half this way, mm -hmm. and then you do the same thing on the opposite side, and that gives you that X pattern. And then from there, you tuck just these corners to the center. And then you just build upon there. And then once you once you have these lines, uh, it's it's pretty simple to just go from there. You know, people, uh, somebody who is not familiar with this basic folding pattern, all we are saying is this is very creative basic pattern. Once you get to fold those details, you can really. Uh, it's almost like a, it's it's like a clay. Yeah, yeah, and then you you have certain fold, and you can manipulate this way, that way, and then you can create different shapes yeah. into it. And um, it's not too many basic pattern does that, but this is very particularly does that. You can do so many things, and I think in this book, Kasahara's variation is brilliant because because there there are so many things you can do. Um, Let's say the origami artist A comes up with this set of the variation. Origami artist B comes up with different set. And Kasahara came up with a different set. And then I think his set is very creative, intriguing. Yeah. And like I said, the way he teaches it mm -hmm. um, is pretty concise. Mm -hmm. And at first, when I first started looking at the book, I was like, oh, that's, this, that's, that's no good. The... Oh, I just wanted to show you how this folds, so just fold it kind of in half. And then boop, and that's a boat. Yeah. And um But the so the, the instructions weren't weren't very concise at first, and the illustrations are not uh as as clean as LaFosse. Yeah. The last two books that we've looked at were by uh Michael LaFosse. I think the reason was he is showing the variation in this a lot. Correct. And then he's assuming once you get the basic variation. 
you will uh, be able to do this and do that. Yeah. So that that cube I was showing you on that page, it's it's a great variation. You can make it into the cube. And if you are kind of mathematical and if you like kind of geometric shapes, you can see it how you will make the cube out of it. Mm -hmm. And this, this could be the great unit. Yeah. And I think, I think now that, I've, that, I've, that I understand what the book is for and about, mm -hmm. I think the illustrations really add a charm to it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's definitely, it, it feels more creative while LaFosse's work feels more... It's elegant. Here, here are lessons for you to learn while this is more like, yeah, here's some patterns and now go have fun and figure it out on your own. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Um, these days, there are two kinds of origami books from what I see. It's one is talking about the variation, like him, showing the basic, basic pattern and mm -hmm. then... Uh, the basis. And, and the basis to the variation. It leaps. Mm -hmm. The other is, is a little bit like a La Fosse, the using variety of the base and then take it from there to a very different uh, shapes and forms because you're using the different basic patterns. Um, so you you went through the two great basic mm -hmm. books. That's great. Yeah. And so now you're going to try more, huh? Yeah. yeah. I want to try to fold the horse here. I mean, that looks really cool. And it, yeah. it looks pretty simple. Like when I'm looking at it, I can see. So, so once you look at it, you can kind of see the base in it still. You can kind of see the little legs or kind of the, the pointy bits of the, of the... Absolutely. Yeah. So I think I kind of understand how it works. Like I can count the, the four sides and so on and so forth. So I, I can't wait to give that a shot. Okay. Then I can't wait to show you this book. All right. Did you, did you try this book? No, but uh, this is one of your favorite books. You always this have this. This is <laughs> my all-time favorite, Zugami, uh, by um, my dear friend, Gay Gross. Gay Meryl Gross. Um, she's, uh, let me say, she's genius. Yeah. She's really genius. Um, and this book is really genius. One of the genius things I love about it is that when you open the page and um, there are two parts. Let me show you. The, let's say you don't have to buy origami paper. It comes with it. So the on your small side like a window, it's a uh, direction, it's an instruction. And this side, uh, no, opposite side. This one is an origami paper. And it's even a uh, line here. You don't have to have uh, scissors. It's perforated. So what you can do is just uh, go, and this paper is beautiful. Let's say if you are doing the fish, it comes with a, uh, one paper red and the other paper blue, and this is a dual color. Dual means both side color. It's not one side. This looks like white, but it's, it's actually, actually like a green. It's got a really light green, and it kind of like it's lighter in the center, and it gets more green as it goes out. Yeah. Well, if I can get the it's camera to pick up, pick it a little bit closer. It's no. beautiful. Yeah, it's very subtle. It's very nice. Yeah, it's a nice paper. So let's see. I will. Fold back and forth. It's only you. You just need it only once or twice, and you are ready to. Yeah, put right up. Yep. Yeah. Then all you have to do is follow her simple instructions, and the type of the paper um, reflects to the type of the design you are doing, let's say if you are making koala, koala, the color becomes koala, cappuccino color, cappuccino mm -hmm. color, and good example is, um, yeah, super cute, yeah, <laughs> this is nice, elephantine, and I made a bunch of the design from here, you can make a rabbit and 
You can make a zoo out of it. I still remember. I, I think most of the kids who does origami go through this. Or this book. Say, yeah, go, go, go through this idea. Mm -hmm. I want to make an origami zoo. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And if you feel that way, this is a book. Because uh, not only is a bunch of, here's a monkey and a rabbit, there's a lion, and it's even a dinosaur. Oh, I like the, the monkeys that have together. Yeah. Um, monkeys together. Yeah, so there's two separate monkeys. Yeah. They have together. Like yeah. The, like the monkeys in a barrel type. That's right. And then, you know, monkeys, monkeys are social mm. animal, right? Yep. Social mammal. So you need a more than one. That would be very nice to do that. Um, the one of the features I really love is she has a picture. Its index is a picture of the model you make. So that's kind of nice. And then the T Rex, I was just uh, making T Rex before this. I haven't finished yet, so I'm not going to show you. But I'm going to show you the another book. Um, so when you do the, uh, again, if you are the origami kid, y you will think about zoo. And the next thing you want to do is, I want to make a kusudama for my Christmas. That was me. And I don't think I'm the only one. Kusudama is a unit origami. And in Japan, uh, kusu means, uh, kusu comes from the word kusuri. Kusuri means medicine. So medicine ball is, that's what it is. Dharma means ball. And you will see the variety of the design from here. I got this book from, I can't remember who gave it to me. I'm sorry, whoever gave it to me. I'm so sorry, I can't remember. I, I had it on my desk for a while. This is by, Ekat, if I, I hope I can say it. Ekat, Ekaterina, what do you think? Ekaterina Lukasheva. Lukasheva. Very, very um, um, Ekaterina, Russian. Ekaterina. Like. Ekaterina um, Lukasheva. So, two days ago, on Monday night, I go to an origami meeting at the new college, mm -hmm. just a, a few blocks away, right? right. And Sonia Wu, who works there for the admission, mm -hmm. she has an origami group, and she could use she uses the space at uh, Marine Love oh, okay. lab. lab. Yeah, yeah. They had a good aquarium and so forth. I love that place. So I go there and we made a big unit origami origami star. Uh, la, 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 la. Origami star. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six unit origami happened to be from this book. I remember this book, so I grabbed it. This one is great kusudama for um, Christmas. The reason is this. Can you tell the, the reason I say that? Because it's a star. Star, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you see that uh, um, hole? It's a, there's a hole gotcha. everywhere. So you can stick the, stick the, um, the top of the tree. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like you have to tape it. Or right, you don't hide it or anything. It'll fit right over the top of the tree. Yeah. Very nice. Or you... Yeah, I was thinking it would make a great gift for a teacher too. Why? Yeah. Well, um, like you said, because it, it fits on top of stuff. Right, This right. would be something that you could put pencils in. Like if you could put something in it to make uh... it stand. You could totally put your pencils in pencils. it. Like ah, pencils I didn't pencils. think of that. Yeah. That's great. It's nice you say something to get because it's back to school. Yeah. And also, you can put the lights in it. I, I will not put the candle light, but the <laughs> lights. And I'm not sure if it's okay with uh, heat, but you can absolutely keep it a shot. So that's what I have today for the kusudama and then this book has very nice directions very concise yeah the only 
Only tough part is when you assemble it. Um, it's a little tricky, but it's in common when you assemble it. Kusudama unit origami. It's a puzzle, and it's very three dimensional. So I can't complain. This book says it enough, and then gives me uh, enough arrows and to put the stuff together. Mm. So it worked out. But if you ever do a kusudama or unit origami, just assume that unit is simple. That's difficult. Mm -hmm. But the assembling it is a puzzle. Yeah. But just like a, you said, Kasahara's book, there are certain part it's not easy to follow. But that is a fun part. That's the yeah. To, having that, it, it's that. It's, it's. I think that's what makes origami interesting for me. Is mm -hmm. that that logic leap? Like mm -hmm. somebody can. You, once you learn the basics, you can do all kinds of fun stuff, and it's it's about being creative and and you know working with what you have and having yes. constraints that you can you, you it has to be a flat piece of paper you know yeah. so it's it's not like clay where you just kind of have a clay and you have the freedom to make everything all the time and you can just take something off and put it someplace else it's, it's a piece of paper it's flat it's square and that's the end of it mm -hmm. yeah so if you are teacher if you are student. If you are parents, how do you use origami back to school in a classroom? There are so many things you can do. Again, I am Sorry. using the model, that's all right, from Zugami, from Gay's, Gay, uh, Gay Ross book. This is one of the designs. If you are learning about shapes, here's a, here's a shape. And this comes from the another one. So uh, the, if you cut in half of the uh, perfect square, that turns into a, uh, what is it? Triangle. Triangle. <laughs> and you can play with it. So if I am playing with the kids, I'm going to talk about a lot about triangle. And then, hey, kids. It's going to be the triangle story, and the, uh, the triangle, which is a mountain. Florida kids may not know the mountains, but you know, you are Jersey kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? So you know the ones. Yeah. <laughs> and the one, one day, the, this was, uh, nobody knew this was a volcano. And one day, the, it went upside down. It erupted. And then the story from here is everything about going down because of the gravity. And it went down from the right corner. It went down the upside mountain volcano. It went down. And it's all down, down, down. And when the heat went down, do you know what happened? Uh, the lava came up. Lava came up. So when lava came up, it just went upside down. The lava came out. And in the back, you could see what she was saying. Lava came up. Magma inside came out and it became lava all the way to the foot of the mountain. And it was all about down, down, down because of the gravity. But, you know, not too many people like down, down story. So yeah. let's, let's go up. Go to the back side. Let's go up from the bottom. So at the bottom of the diamond square. The beautiful diamond square. I wonder who said diamond for this shape, but it's beautiful. So from there, go up and down just a bit. Now you are ready to make your journey with your boat. And here's a game you can do in a classroom with your friends. Can we show this stuff down? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we, we will go through this. So here's a game. Oh, gotcha. You grow. <laughs> and whoever goes uh, uh, farthest, of course, win without tipping it. Right, without, before it falls. Exactly. Super cute. Yeah. And here's uh, another one from the triangle. If you want to... Um, uh, second grade, third grade is 
studying, especially third grade, is talking about the variety of the triangle. And this little bird, it's not as complicated as a paper crane. So teacher, uh, parents, feel feel okay about this because it's only a four five fold. You go through this goes the same way down down. And put it up just a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Down, down, and up, up. And from here, you can see the variety of the triangle again. And relationship with the lines and 90 degree angle in here. And the only tricky part is called the inside reverse fold, but you get it, you get it, I got it. Um, even kids can figure out if you can't figure out. From here, it's already... Um, the bird flying, yes, and you just tap that in, and that is the, a little bird, and this flies. You oh, see that's that? cool. That yeah, is a little bit closer. Yeah. yeah. Because the combination of the triangle uh, the, is just so intriguing and then gives that movement. Um, I think this is very intriguing and fun origami to do. As much as the elephants. Elephants had a lot of fold. But, mm -hmm. uh, so I hope... Um, you have origami in your classroom. It's not only for fun, but for the learning tool. I will have uh, the links about why origami is good for the classrooms mm -hmm. and why origami is efficient geometry uh, teaching tool. And also, it's good for the language arts because you can tell a story. And I will, I can, I can continue to talk about this on and on, but <laughs> she's good. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's going to be the end of Origami Lunch. We're a minute early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off instead of sitting here awkwardly. So thank you for joining us for Origami oh, oh, Lunch. Oh, 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 did we tell them about uh, free class? We did, yes. Oh, last week. Yeah. So go ahead. So uh, we are at this. Origami Studio, we are at the studio, the studio, the construction is over and I'm doing the open house. As a part of the open house, there's an introductory free class for the kids and uh, families. And when I say families, families open house is on Saturday and the kids origami class, free class, free, uh, Wednesday 4.30, Thursday, Friday 4.30. And Saturday is a family day, so adults, please come. Uh, teenager, please come. Any age. I'm, I'm targeting for all age for the Saturday. So that is at 4.30. And I appreciate if you let us know you are coming so that uh, we, we make sure we have chairs and desks for you. Yeah, I'm trying to get the, the, uh, the image up here so you guys can see. Yeah our time schedules, but it's not quite letting me... The time schedule is uh, kind of simple though. I try to make it simple to myself. Uh, 4.30 to 5.30 from Wednesday through Saturday. Wednesday through Saturday, 4.30 to 5.30. And you don't have to bring your paper, but if you want to... Um, right. So, uh, so what, what should they bring as far as, is there anything that they should bring? Their clean fingers. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, nothing. Okay. Yep. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop that up on the screen real fast. I'm actually going to get rid of us. So we're going to go ahead and say goodbye, and we're going to outro with uh, the schedule. So it was nice seeing everybody, and we'll see you next Wednesday for Origami Lunch. Uh, let me do this, and let me do... Alright. Alright, beautiful. Right, there you go, guys.
All right, so we'll see you. We'll, we'll see you guys next week for origami lunch. And then we have lunch for hamburger. You want some hamburger? Mm. Teriyaki burger? Oh, that sounds different. Okay, I'll All right. make some. All right, bye guys. Bye.